So I want to answer a question I get relatively often, and that is why do I use and support free software? And when I say free software, I'm not talking about software that you get for free. I'm talking about software that is free and open source, Libre, meaning the source code is open to the public and people can change, modify, distribute it in whatever way that they want. And I think that this is very good, not just for developers, but for normal people who have no knowledge of computer computers whatsoever. So I'm going to freeze this video actually as a response because last week or a couple days ago, at least I got a question from someone and I think it's a good question. Uh, he's basically asking me why I use free software. So I want to phrase this video as a response to this. Now, this is uh, from Michael. This is actually a donation. He sends in $20. Thank you for your donation. But I'm going to read his question. Hi, Luke. Love your vids. Despite using Linux and being a C++ dev for a pro C++ dev for 15 years now, I've never managed to take my rising to your Chad level. Thank you, Michael. I send you this donation with a question. I love FOSS because it make it gives me what I want. Suckless, crashless, BSless user experience. But why do you care so much about the Libre or free part? For instance, ThinkPads with no proprietary code or Parabola with no proprietary codex and firmware. Back in the late 90s, Windows wasn't that bad. NT4 worked quite well. Visual Studio was really good. The MSDN library was six CDs of documentation. I'm not ashamed to admit that I liked proprietary software, and I pirated all of it. My philosophy is if I can get my hands on it, it's mine, especially when it comes to intellectual property. That's in quotation marks. Um, I simply don't recognize it. So philosophically, I wouldn't hate Windows if A, it worked, and the UX didn't, uh, the user experience didn't suck, including no privacy issues, and B, it was free or obtainable via piracy. Now, the, the question goes on. I'm going to go ahead and say some stuff in response to this. So first off, why does the Windows user experience suck now? Now, one thing that's inherent to proprietary software is that it, it doesn't really have a direct interface with the people who use it. That is, you don't really have a control of how Windows is going to look in the future or how it's going to look in its next update. I actually agree with this guy in that when I was a kid, you know, in the 90s, hey, I liked Windows. I liked Windows 95. I used it in 98 or whatever it is. And I actually liked the user experience. I didn't find it frustrating. I didn't find it infuriating in the way that I find Windows 10. But one thing inherent to proprietary software is that users, just in terms of superficial things, like the user interface, really don't have that much control. Um, Windows in particular is made for sort of everyone out there. So if someone wants something particular or if some, someone wants the ability to customize it, they really don't have that ability. And since it's proprietary software, a lot of the design decisions are now being made for the good of the proprietors. So now Windows 10 has ads all over the place. It give hey, buy Candy Crush, all this kind of stuff all the time. So saying something like, oh, I, I like proprietary software, but I just want to get rid of that stuff. You can't do that. You don't really have a choice. That's one of the reasons that proprietary software is such a pain. Uh, additionally, you know, he says, oh, well, if only there were no privacy issues. The same thing is with privacy. The same problem is with privacy. You might say, oh, I'd use proprietary software if it didn't have privacy issues. But when the, you can't see the source code, to something, or even if you can see it and you don't have control over it, there's really nothing that you can do about it. You just got to sit there and take it. That's what proprietary software is. You just got to sit and watch what it does to your computer and you have no say about it. Uh, in fact, you might not even know about it. It's going on behind your back. So um, anyway, I'll go on. So keep reading. Despite considering myself a Linux veteran, I don't see the problem with, say, uh, NVIDIA drivers, non-free video codecs, or CPU firmware blobs. I download them. They work. Uh, for me, I never had a problem. And I get 4K at 60 FPS on Linux. So what's the problem? Sure, if they're sending my keystrokes and my porn queries back to NVIDIA corporate, I'd be, to be upset. But they don't. So one thing, it's very assumptive, assumptive, <laughs> assumptionist of, for him to say that they don't send his key keystrokes back to NVIDIA corporate. Because the one aspect of proprietary software you just can't avoid is the fact that if you don't know specifically what's going on, which you don't in the case of proprietary software, you don't know if they're sending their, your queries back to NVIDIA corporate. You don't know who knows what porn you're watching. 
And in fact, it is so easy to do something like that with a simple line of code. You have every reason to think that people are doing it. In fact, we know that people are doing stuff like this. Take, let's actually take the most abstract, uh, well, let's take the, the most universal proprietary software, and that is the proprietary software in your computer's BIOS. Um, we know that the Intel management engine and a lot of, not just Intel, but other CPU companies will have these extra uh, processors on your board, on your computer board that run proprietary software, and they have network access and they can access your computer's memory. It's very easy. In fact, it has been demonstrated. You can look it up. It's been demonstrated that you can very easy, easily get any kind of thing that's in your memory just by having these firmware blobs. You wouldn't even think of them as doing something. You wouldn't even think of them as, oh, they're watching what porn I'm watching or they're, or they're sending that data somewhere. But it is so easy to do that it, you should expect that basically it's everywhere. Now, one thing you need to remember about you know, free software versus proprietary software is the crazy conspiracy theorists that have always said about how terrible proprietary software is. They have always been proven right. 100% of the time. Richard Stallman has a 100% accuracy rating, okay, in terms of the damages that proprietary software can cause. I mean, t take back when the Snowden things were going on, where, you know, the week before the Snowden revelations happened, you know, people were like, oh, well, it doesn't matter, man. Just it's proprietary software. Oh, these big companies, they're not going to steal your d data. They have no reason to. I mean, no, the government doesn't care about you. They're not going to put it all together in some nationwide, really global database. It doesn't matter. And then the cope changed once it was revealed that literally all of that crazy conspiracy theory, conspiracy theory stuff is true. The cope changed to, oh, well, they're doing it, but it doesn't matter, man. I mean, everyone's spied on. Like, they don't care about you. It, it isn't going to make a difference, yada, yada, et cetera, et cetera. First off, it does make a difference. And every aspect of proprietary, every pr proprietary program you don't use, your privacy is improving. Okay. That's one thing to take away. But, um, you know, the, the thing to remember about proprietary software is it's so easy for people to violate your pri privacy that, uh, you know, really anyone could do anything. I mean, even the scripts that I have that, are, of course, are all free software, you know, I often think, you know, instead of taking this password and encrypting it and doing this with it, I could very easily send it to my web server or something like that, and I could get everyone's passwords. It is so easy to be able to write software that exploits people. And one thing that people like Richard Stallman have been very good at is they recognize how easy this is, and they make the very sensible judgment that if it's so easy, we have every reason to think that some people writing proprietary software, in fact, even if it's just a very small number, but it's probably, frankly, really big, uh, we have every reason to think that people could just as easily exploit proprietary software to get your data. And they do. We know they do. But just don't cope with this kind of stuff. Anyway, so that, uh, I'll go on. The, the comment is almost over. But um, oh, anyway, I'm not, I'm not trying to, like, stick it to this guy. I think his points are good. I'm just using it because it's a good example. Um, anyway, to finish it up, he says, I click agree to terms of service, I think, uh, regardless of whether I acknowledge their terms or not, I use the driver and it works and I move on. I would like to hear why using FOSS and only FOSS is such a great thing. To me, it is more beta to think that you're changing the world by reducing the market for proprietary blobs and abstain from restrictive contracts rather than a Chad who brazenly violates them and takes what's rightfully his by any means necessary. Curious to hear your thoughts. Thank you. Uh, well, again, thank you, uh, Michael, for your comment and your donation. But, um, you know, so uh, to make something clear, I don't care about when uh, Microsoft or Apple. I'm not trying to stick it to them. I am not trying to change the world. I'm not trying to reduce their market share. I don't care about that kind of stuff. When I choose what software I'm using, I make my decisions based on my user experience. I use free software. I, I mean, I use Linux because it's better than Windows. It's better than Mac. It is, I can do more stuff on it. It's more extensible. I am more in, I have a more indirect control of it. And even when I give it to a normie, when I give a computer running Ubuntu or something to a normie, it is better for them too. You know, there, there, there are so many things that they avoid not having to deal with Windows or Mac OS or something like that. So I use it because it's better. I use free software because it is better. It might be unfamiliar to you if you haven't used it, but it is better. Um, so I don't risk, I don't abstain from proprietary software because, 
you know, I just have some stupid ethical principle that it consists in me using stupid free software. I use it. I don't use proprietary software because it's bad. And the other thing to note about this, again, this guy had earlier said, um, what was it? I love FOSS because it gives me what I want. Suckless, crashless, BSless user experience. The thing to remember about that is, uh, you know, proprietary software, the incentives are to always write things that are big and bloated and hard to use and need big updates. Because if you were writing, I mean, just take an example. Let's say the Unix command grep. Let's say you made a proprietary version of grep. Who the heck is going to ever use that? No one is going to use it, even if it had extra features. Even if all the free software vari varieties of grep disappeared overnight, uh, no one is going to use your version of grep because grep is such a simple and reproducible program. Someone could write in one day as a homework assignment a, a grep of their own. Okay, They don't need it. The incentives for proprietary software is to make software that enforces a particular user experience and it imprints on people and it locks people into that particular user experience. That's why we have a bunch of huge programs like Microsoft Office that does a million different things and it does all of them poorly um, because it's just a big mess that, uh, you know, of course there are free software equivalents of it, but I'm saying that proprietary software has to be bloated because, uh, you know, if it isn't bloated, it it's easy to reproduce. So proprietary software, and again, I'm agreeing with actually most of the stuff that this guy's saying. I don't have some ethical reason, you know, I'm just going to not use it because proprietary software, there's just, a, there's just a moral evil about it. I use it because, it, you know, or I don't use it because proprietary software places the incentives to make bloated software. And also it, it always puts the temptation in a developer's face to, you know, violate the user, user's privacy or do something else. And also, frankly, I mean, if you look at even people like Richard Stallman, if you look at some of the reasons that, you know, he originally founded the GNU project and got upset with proprietary software, a lot of it comes down to the fact that you, for whatever reason, proprietary software often just forbids you from doing things. You just can't modify this. You sometimes can't even fix problems. If it were just open source or something like that, it, you could at least, at least, uh, you know, get on and what's actually going on. So... Anyway, that's the view I want you to come around or come away from this video with. I, I'm not, this isn't some ethical test. It's not a purity spiral. I don't believe in free software because I think like uh, people who write proprietary code are evil. I believe in it because it's better. Um, and yeah, if you're new to it, if you're new to it as an experience, it might be something that is a little weird. And of course, as this guy notes, you know, there are things like NVIDIA or proprietary drivers where people will make proprietary, you know, people or companies that have monopolistic positions, they will write proprietary co codex or whatever just because they can. But at every single decision point where I have to choose between proprietary software and free software, I go with free software because my experience with it is that it, over the long term, it will mean less frustration, it will mean more customizability, it will mean more freedom, more privacy, it'll just be easier to use. So that's why I use it, and that's it. So anyway, uh, thank you, Michael. Thank you, everyone else, for watching. That's my view on free software, and I will see you guys next time.